All right, guys, this is a fairly quick. Oh, let's try that again. All right, guys, uh, good to see you this morning. This is a uh, quick video on setting a tensioning a private uh, power pole. Uh, there's not going to be too many people that experience this because not too many homeowners have enough property to have a private power pole, meaning something they've placed on their property that's not owned by the power company. But in our case, we have a pole that we had to set that's our side. You know, they call it their side, our side. Um, is this three eighths? Sorry, guys, I got to look real quick if I bought quarter or three eighths here. Three eighths. Okay, that's what I thought. So, um, there's not a lot of information online about tensioning power poles the right way, right? You can find any video on guy wiring, and <clears throat> most of those are what I would call uh, hobbyist guy wiring. They're not really um, what the power company would do. And so, I have this bad aff affliction where I want to do things like the industry standard, meaning that. If I'm going to really do something, I want to do it just like the power company would do it. So I did some research on uh, how they set their poles and what the options are. And, and there's a component here that I'll talk about that just so happened to be laying down at the bottom of one of my power poles at the end of the property. Um, it's a closed industry for obvious reasons. You're dealing with high voltage. Um, if you're not a licensed linemen or something like that I'm sure they don't want you even getting near their power poles and I get it for obvious reasons like um, liability but if you have your own power pole you're sort of screwed it's like a big blank void so I started studying and went online and um, um, some of these the terminology here for anybody that's a lineman that's watching this um, I'm not totally sure on all the terminology, so we'll go through what I'm calling them, and then in the comments, you guys can correct me on what the actual nomenclature form is. Um, and somewhere I have the uh, actual paperwork. In fact, I might grab that real quick. Alrighty, I went and looked at my invoice. Not This isn't it. This is my AAA thingy. Um, and I wrote down real quick what they are. So I knew I needed an anchor. I just went out and looked at the pole and I observed a couple things about telephone poles. If the guy wire is down below the power lines, they're non-insulated guy wires, meaning there's not an isolator in the guy wire itself. And if any of you go out and look at your, the, any of the, uh, guy wires for power poles, you'll see, why is that flickering? Stop. Um, if any of you guys go out to your power poles, you'll see two types, non-isolated and isolated. So the non-isolated is a continuous wire. That's what I'm doing here. Isolated has a big ceramic square isolator, at least ours do in the Northwest. Um, and that's if the guy wire goes up and crosses the line or is probably some, you know, some radius near the high voltage. So this is going to be a non-isolated guy wire setup and so I went out and I, I already kind of knew these things existed but I was just going to use some eye bolts and some cabling and most people call that good so I found out a number of things so this is called an angled thimble eye bolt and they do make them in two types so you can see this has got an offset for the for the cable and then they also make straight ones and they make these most of the time these are driven in by a machine and they're like seven to 12 feet long or whatever and they've got an auger on the end of them. Some even have, um, for rocky areas, I think they've even got a, a, like a bit that drills through the rocks or whatever, I'm not quite sure. 
I ordered one with threads, and then what I went and did is I went down, I ha have an old place I used to work that does some fabrication, and they had, they have a scrap bin. So I grabbed a piece of the C channel, and I used their mag drill. Now, if I didn't have a mag drill, I would have brought it home and used a hole saw. That would have worked just fine in the drill press, but they've got a magnetic drill. Super easy to drill a three quarter inch hole in here. We call them plug cutters. Um, and so I did that. This is 5 8 11, the thread pitch on this. The galvanization was so thick, I couldn't get a regular class 2B bolt to go on. So I, I can't remember in the machine's handbook if it's class A or class C, which is a crappier thread, but these are some pretty junky threads. So I had to like put fluid, um, some lubricant on there and work it back and forth to get the bolt to thread up as far as it did. But so the idea is this thimble eye bolt and this angle iron are going to go in concrete and the, the, it's just a big glorified washer is all this is to keep the eye bolt from pulling out. And then these are called dead ends and so there's different types of dead ends, not only lengths but some other variations that I don't still understand. These have an orange mark on them which I think is how you line up the um, wraps. So these dead ends, the way they work is they've got glass, looks almost like sandblasting glass glued to the inside of the wrap. They form this wrap around some sort of die at the factory and they coat it with glue so the strands don't come apart. And I watched an installation video and when you guys see me install it, you wrap it around the cable and it holds. It's like a Chinese finger trap. So these are called dead ends, it's 3 8 wire, and the wire itself, I learned, is 3 8 EHS, which stands for extra high strength, and it's a low twist wire, meaning it doesn't have a lot of twist, and I think that's to keep it from trying to unwind under tension. And then the size is 1 by 7, so there's 7 strands here, I think, and I'm not sure what the 1 stands for. Um... And then I don't know why they call this all thread a double arming nut, but basically this is three quarter inch all thread. These are some square washers I bought from the company, and I'll have links to the two the cup the companies I bought everything from below. This one I happened to buy from U.S. Cargo something because they had them cheap. They were available elsewhere. Um, this is half inch by 12. Um, so the reason I've got mixed sizes here is uh, this one's in sheer. In other words, you're pulling down on it. So I didn't want it to break off and it was cheap. So three quarters just happened to work there. I could have ordered five eighths. That would have been fine too. And this is five eighths, which was my intended size, which works with the three eighths um, EHS um, guy wire that I have and I ordered 40 feet of that so um, and then this is a half inch by 12 double eye um, turnbuckle so I get six inches on each side of adjustment I believe is how that works so these thimble eyes just keep the cable um, naturally ran I think I think this thimble eye, now that I'm looking at it, may have been a little small. It looks like, well, no, it, it looks like it will work for three eighths. It looks like maybe it was made for a quarter though. Um, so, so that's the deal with these. These are these are dead ends, and I believe they're 24 inches long. I've got four of them because I've got two dead ends going to the eye and the thimble bolt, and then two going from the eye to the thimble nut. Is that right? Thimble nut? Thimble eye nut. Um, I'm going to have to cut this off because my telephone pole or my power pole is only a 6x6. Six six. Let me check the time on you guys. Six minutes. So there's some other hardware that are, is optional instead of these thim these dead ends. There's this, so this was down at my power pole, and this is basically a one-way device. So in, so the way this works is inside of this piece, 
is some sort of one-way gripping device. And the way it works is the cable actually goes through this way. There's a spring here. And when you push the cable through um, under tension, it's able to pull back on that spring. And I'm not quite sure how everything works in here. I'm guessing there's a slip nut that maybe makes a, something crimp down on the um, on the uh, cable. This was made for quarter inch guy wire, which is all they've got attaching our telephone pole up there. So I kind of went overboard, but the three eighths was just as cheap. So this is quarter inch. And what you do, you bend this and this slips out. So whatever you do, you're, you're going to, you're going to slip this through your, through your, um, thimble eye bolt. Am I saying that right? Uh, angled thimble eye bolt, right. Slip this through and then you bend it in and you put this collar on as far as this is, you know, me looking at it. And then once you've got that, you tension your cable and you actually slip this through. It's got a little like bump right here and you slip that through and then you turn it. And then you put, you actually install your cable through here and then you let tension go and this is hooked to that and it's like a Chinese finger trap kind of dealio. Uh, it seems like all the hardware is square nuts. I'm assuming they probably run around with crescent wrenches or something, pliers, I don't know. So everything is square nuts. Um, that's pretty much it as far as installation goes. This is going to go in concrete. That's going through the post. So what you guys will see next on the video, you'll actually, the next video you see part two will be me and doing installations. So um, this is a look into the um, power pole industry. By no means is this even remotely comprehensive, but if you're setting your own private power pole, this may help somebody. So I'll put links below where I got all the equipment um, and I will talk to you guys in the next episode. Oh, I forgot to record um, costs, so I'm just going to roughly, because I don't have my invoice in front of me, so like $7, um, another like under $10 item, let's see, how much are these each, what did I get these for, uh, I want to say these were somewhere around 10 so I think I paid 40 for all of them, I can't quite remember. These washers were awesome, ridiculous. Uh, they were under a dollar each. Um, this deadhead piece was again seven to twelve, fifteen dollars. This I think was three or four bucks. This this guy here, free courtesy of the power company. Uh, these I think run around fifteen to twenty bucks, depending on what size they are. Can't remember. Um, overall, very reasonable. I was shocked at at how reasonable all these products are from a consumer standpoint. So very reasonable. I forgot to tell you guys, I painted this black so it wouldn't rust in the um, concrete. And the guy wire was uh, 46 cents a foot, if I remember right. And then unfortunately shipping was like 20 some dollars. So had I been smart, I would have ordered lots of it, but how often do you set a power pole? I can't think of any other reason I'd be using that stuff because it does kink. So you're not going to use it for like pulling things because it'll kink over. So that's it, guys. Um, I will talk to you guys on the next episode.